chest trauma in a nutshell, pennant generating and blunt trauma. As an emergency doctor, you're looking for a spontaneous ventilation, pneumothorax, cardiac tamponade. You can look at those three really, really fast. Remember that sometimes it's not always ABC. Sometimes you got to think about chest tube before intubating. Sometimes you got to think about blood products before intubating. For a pneumothorax, remember that the hypotension, the tracheal deviation, the decreased breath sounds, all that stuff's really unreliable. Even an upright chest x-ray is going to lie to you, especially if they're a supine x-ray. That's pretty much worthless. So use your ultrasound if you can, if you're unsure. Always look for those secondary vital signs. They're probably not going to be hypotensive ever. They're probably going to actually be in respiratory distress. I can't speak in complete sentences. They feel uncomfortable laying flat and they're telling you like, I can't breathe laying flat. Uh, they may complain of shortness of breath, but they're going to have tachycardia and they're going to have hypoxia, typically less than 92%. For these patients, for just a pneumothorax, if you decide to intervene on the test question, it's do needle poke first, followed by a chest tube. In real life, it's just do a chest tube. And by chest tube, I mean chest catheter. For plain pneumothorax, you should never be using large bore chest tubes anymore. You're using a 12 French, French catheter or less. And then for hemothorax, you know, again, don't do large bore tubes anymore. Less than or equal to 20 French tubes is reasonable for hemothorax. And remember indications to go to the OR for hemothorax. The textbook answer is 1500 milliliters immediate output, but really anything large on the test question, they're going to be hinting at you need to go to the operating room.